long as the economy stays strong and uh, people spend money on wrestling, that's all I give a crap about. All right, oh man. So to sum it up, you have not lost your passion for the industry. Any plans on possible in the future going back to TNA? I, I would never rule anything out. You know, uh, it, it is the wrestling business. You never say never. Hmm. You know, I left on good terms. I still am uh, friends with a lot of guys there. Still am uh, on good terms with the office there. So, I mean... You know, I'm not going to rule anything out ever. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, what what they need and what I need to do at the time. Uh, you know, I really want to go back to school and get a little bit more education under my belt because, uh, you know, I'm feeling basically that now's the time. And uh, who, who knows? You never know what's going to happen in wrestling. Real quick, it was, uh, it was uh, the third anniversary of Eddie Guerrero last week uh, of his passing. Uh, have you ever worked with uh, Eddie Guerrero? Uh, no, I personally never worked with Eddie. Never worked with Eddie. Oh, what are your thoughts on Eddie, though? Oh, he was fantastic. Uh, you know, I mean, demons outside of the wrestling business aside, uh, you know, in ring, he was one of the greatest performers, I think, ever. And, and a, a true, uh, you know, groundbreaker for guys like me. I mean, between him, uh, Chris Benoit, and Owen Hart, you have three guys who, you know, were the under six foot, uh, yardstick by which all others must be measured. You know, these are the guys who set the bar. I, I think, you know, as all their stories are to look back on, unfortunately, uh, me, I always try to review them, or keep, keep them in mind of a positive light in what they did in the ring and what they did for guys uh, like me in the business. And you mentioned that you were going to school in January for broadcasting. I was just curious, who did you see as one of the great uh, broadcasters uh, in wrestling? Are, are you talking like, like uh, are you asking me who my favorite announcers and stuff were? That kind of right. Thing? Who did oh, you okay. thought told the story well, well? I mean, there's you know there's there's different uh, there's different aspects of, of broadcasting. I mean, uh, as far as uh, behind the microphone or you know that kind of in front of the camera kind of thing, I always thought Jesse Ventura was the greatest color man ever, <laughs> right? Uh, because he at the same time of putting over both the baby face and the heel, added enough to the broadcast entertainment wise that you were always interested in what Jesse had to say. Uh, Jerry Lawler was great for this, too, before they started, uh, you know, uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to call it handcuffing him. I want, I want to say, you know, uh, directing more of what he said. Right. You know, there was a time when, when Jerry Lawler was a true heel commentator, and I think that's one of the things that's lacking in the business right now is that, uh, you know, uh, wrestling television has less, lost that, you know, heel and babyface commentator, uh, uh, dynamic, and I think that that was one of the things that kept people around is, is that little bit of entertainment. Is that your goal to become a, a, an announcer or play-by-play -play guy for for wrestling? Oh, absolutely! I would love to do that job. It would be fantastic. I also think that uh, they've kind of lost that authority that uh, broadcasters like Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse Ventura had. Like when Jesse said, uh, "Shawn Michaels better make a tag soon, or this one's over." You actually believed it, and I think that's kind of missing from today. People now, because the announce team is so uh, is always hyping whatever the next match is or the main event is, they, they really don't get involved in the match that's going on as as much as they used to anymore. Right. You know, like that was you know that's one of my pet peeves when watching when wrestling and matches and stuff like that is when the announce team passes over what's going on in the ring to talk about you know things that are coming up or things that may happen or know what's going on backstage right. why don't they concentrate on what's going on in the ring anymore because in my mind it devalues the people who are in the ring doing what they're doing right you know it it turns them into meaningless you know eye filler right they're now you know chum so that your eyes can have something to watch while you're listening to what's more important uh where where can the fans uh, get a hold of you uh you have a internet address there yep Absolutely. I'm always reachable on uh, my uh, website at johnnydivine.net, uh, on MySpace at myspace.com slash canadiandivine, or they can email me directly at the only legit Johnny Divine email, johnnydivine at shaw, S-H-A-W, dot C-A. johnnydivine.net. Thanks, man, for coming on. Uh, will you join us again? Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. I'd love to. And also check out your column there on the Slam site as well. Yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, you know, Got to keep those hit numbers up. <laughs> it's Johnny Devine on OWW Radio. We'll be right back. One, two, three, take my hand and come
with me because you look so fine that I really want to make you mine. OWW Genesis, obsessed with wrestling. Four, five, six, come on and get your kicks. Now you don't need the money when you look like that, do you, honey? Big black boots, long brown hair. She's so sweet with her. OWW Genesis, Nick Anthony, Kai Andrews, OWW Radio. Uh, thanks to Johnny Devine for joining us. Uh, man, he let us in on a lot of things, didn't he? Can I? Oh, definitely. Uh, Devine uh, exposing why he left uh, TNA as well as uh, what he's going to be doing in the future. What about him not wanting to give much publicity to the rumors that's going around about those guys in, uh, uh, I guess, uh, out there on the web? impersonating him. He didn't want to get much into it. Don't believe the hype, I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, the WWE was in England last week. Uh, what were your thoughts about that, the whole William Rigo? And you know what? In my opinion, he won't keep the, the belt for much longer once he gets to the States. I, I would agree. Um, I, William Regal was a guy that they never really used properly. He, he should be near the top, but of course we know there's... <laughs> There's only a couple of spots, and uh, the same guys seem to hold them all the time. He's way overdue for some type of huge uh, championship run for a, a world title, in my I opinion. I thought he was, his moment was coming when he was the GM, actually, of all things. Um, when he, he seemed to be getting uh, some, some, you know, uh, some, something going with the, with the GM job, but then uh, he got suspended, and I think he kind of fell to the bottom of the pile. Yeah. It's going to take a long time for him to get back up. Even with him as the intercontinental champion, and that GM, that GM role for him, it just fits him so well, doesn't it? Why don't they just make him permanently the GM for all? Well, maybe, maybe they will do that. I, I thought he played it great, and you know when he turned off the lights and everything. Yeah, that was perfect, <laughs> wasn't it? That was pretty good. Um, you got a lot of people uh, riled up with that, so maybe they'll return to that. Oh, uh, over there on SmackDown, we had a uh, uh, what? What is a? Uh, what does Daniel call him? Crack Hardy? <laughs> <laughs> we had Crack Hardy going up against The Undertaker. In a, it, was a, it was an all right match. It was a good match, yeah? Did you see it? I didn't see it, but I heard it was good, actually. So mm-hmm. I, I wasn't surprised, though. I, I always thought that uh, Hardy could uh, put up a good match with The Undertaker. Well, SmackDown, it, it started off with, with a casket in the ring. Uh, you know, the lights are on, the blue lighting is on. Undertaker is giving this speech, and meanwhile, he's laying in the casket. Right. Uh, after the speech, he pops up out of the casket, and then Jeff Hardy then says another speech. Jeff Hardy comes on the the Titan Tron, and he's got this uh, glow in the dark paint on, <laughs> and I don't know, it just fits him so well. I, I like the character actually. I like this deranged uh, character of Jeff Hardy, and I think he should stick with it. In my opinion, it's so old. This whole extreme, uh, and Matt Hardy is so out of shape now, in my opinion, that I think they need to move on and, and become single uh, superstars, single wrestlers, and leave this uh, Hardy Boys behind them, I, I in my opinion. I, I would agree. I mean, um, but uh, retro sells, right? I mean, we still have DX coming back every now and then, and I guess uh, they still want to capitalize a little bit with the Hardys while they can. But I, I would agree. Um, I think uh, the Hardy Boys as a team is something that's been done a long time ago. We need to let that rest. And, and let's see what Jeff can do with this new character, like you said. Yeah, uh, I don't see him in a, a world title run because I just don't see it yet. But I do like the character. I'm sorry. I do like his character and this deranged character that he has because he is so over with the fans. People like him. I want to see if they will still like him and they still can cheer him if he becomes heel. Well, that that's going to be the question. And, and that is the mark of, of a great wrestler. He can be a heel or a face, and it's going to be interesting. Um, can Jeff do it? Yeah, I think he can, but um, we'll have to see if he actually can. Uh, check this out, can I? Uh, ProWrestling.com has a story involving Scott Hall at a TNA pay-per-view. 